We may not know it, but we have been using biotechnology for centuries. We've made wine, we've made cheese, we've produced antibiotics, we've made vaccines, we've made superior cows and superior crops. But in recent years, the field of biotechnology has experienced a paradigm shift. We now have the tools to select genes, to select pathways, and to produce novel products. The vast amount of information afforded by genome sequencing and the recent scientific breakthrough in gene editing, called CRISPR-Cas, means that we can move into an era of precision breeding. I am adopting these biotechnology advances in my own research, and I'm investigating plant resilience. More specifically, I'm working on forest trees. Come to think of it, forest trees are long-lived organisms, and being long-lived, they may experience different biotic and abiotic challenges during their lifetime. With climate change, we expect that the challenge of pathogens and pests will be exacerbated. You can imagine that a tree that is undergoing a drought condition will have compromised defenses, and in that case, pathogens and pests may be rife. With human activity, we have inadvertently moved pests and pathogens around the world. And one example that I'm going to share with you is an insect pest. And this has moved to different countries around the world and become established in recent years. Don't be fooled. It looks quite harmless, but this one to two millimeter big insect pest can have devastating effects on gum trees in plantations. The insect lays her eggs on very young gum tree leaves, and this forms a gall or bumps. Eventually, that young tree becomes stunted and will never reach the potential of a fully-fledged forest tree, severely limiting production. So in my research group down in South Africa, we are very curious about what are the early defense responses that a plant will emit to protect itself against this insect pest. And we find that it's a complex network, interconnections of genes and pathways. And what we find is that very early on, the cell is being compromised. Plant growth is suppressed. The pest is using this molecular responses for its own gain. We also see that there is some evidence of enhanced defenses to some level, and we realize that this is the production of specialized plant substances called metabolites. In these cases, the tree is trying to defend itself, but it is unable to do it efficiently. So what if, within this network, we can identify key points to manipulate? And we can do that knowing these molecular switches. So when we manipulate these particular key points, we can re reverse the process. We can have enhanced growth and much enhanced defenses. And in that way, we could protect the tree's survival. We can harness this information and extend it into crops. And that is because resilience and the mechanisms underlying that is hardwired. This is the population of the world in 2050. We can see that Africa will reach a population of 2 billion. This means that we need to increase food production 60% to meet that demand. And this warrants investment in biotechnology and biotechnology innovation to meet those demands. 
Now, for some, biotechnology and specifically genetic modification can spark some uncertainties, some fear. But like those forest trees that I'm working on, we should be resilient. We should be resilient against fear. If we let fear spread like a pest in that forest, then we are at the mercy of multinationals that will use that fear for their own profit, and Africa will not achieve its potential. So, coupling biotechnology innovation together with the right type of attitude, we will benefit the small grower and humankind. Thank you.